uh, live Ron Burgundy. <laughs> I probably uh, it's probably the the closest I'll ever get to looking like Ron Burgundy. But there we go. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's check if we're live then, Dave. Uh, let's have a little look. Who's uh, anyone joining us today? Um, Who's going to be first? I reckon it's probably going to be Shona, Marky V. So I do that thing be... where I send a buff to whoever joins first again. So I do that. <laughs> It annoys me when I do it. It's up to you. To it's up to you. Office, but all right, I'm going to do it. Whoever's, whoever's first is going to get one, unless I know they've already got like 10. You know? <laughs> ah, Laura, Laura Collins. Collins. Laura, I'll send you a free buff because you were the first to comment on the live. So drop me an email, <laughs> dave at evertrek.co.uk with your address. I'll send it to you later on in the week. Um, Brilliant. Well done, mate. Well done. Yeah, yeah it's great to see. So we've got Laura, Shona, Marky V, Kim, um, Suzette. We've got Suzette joining us. Great stuff. Yeah, it's a bit weird. A bit weird today. We're um, uh, I'm actually on the road, so I've pulled over, but I didn't want to miss uh, seeing all all of you and um, talking about this wonderful live that we we've got today. Um, and yeah, Dave, it's weird, isn't it? Because we are flipped the wrong side, and we couldn't. Yeah, we we're flipping. Go with it. We're flipped. So hang on, if you don't mind, Dan. Hey, everybody, welcome to uh, today's uh, <laughs> Tuesday tune in with myself, Dave, and Andy. Hey, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So nice, I got to nice. do. I could do a better Andy than that. You ready? Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is that what I do? Is it brilliant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen it. I've and here we go. Happen. We got we got Fee. She's on the comments as well. So yeah, good to see Fee um, back on the comments. We got Bri, Bri, Bri. Where you been? I feel like I feel like I haven't seen, I haven't, I haven't heard from Bri for a while. I hope uh, all yeah, is well. I, I've seen enough of Bri to last a lifetime in those pictures. <laughs> he, takes. <laughs> <laughs> he takes some great pictures now, but I hope all is well anyway. And it's great as well the um, seeing all the community. They've been out and about. Even in this hot weather, they've been um, nailing the training. Um, I saw Amy as well. I think Amy Cutting. I think she did, um, you know, kind of puts it in perspective because we did Glencoe Challenge a couple of weeks ago, which is, you know, what was it, 26, just under 40K. And she did 100 kilometers in one day, which was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 it's a big one. So 100K, I mean, well done if Amy's on the live. I haven't seen her yet. But, um, yeah, big, big shout to, to her because I thought that was – very inspirational. I actually had a look at it myself yesterday and thought, could we do that yeah. next year? So well, you never know. You might see a Yeti on the um, on that trail next year. But talking about Yetis, then. So today, Dave, we were, you know, thinking about what we're gonna what we're gonna go for today. And um, me and Dave, both big Stranger Things fans, um, and we couldn't help but turn the Tuesday tune in upside down and trying to think about all the stories and the myths and um, you know some of the the legends of the Himalayas and, and, and definitely, you know, some of the things that are a bit more out there, you know, maybe not quite supernatural, but maybe on that same level. And we thought, you know, we, um, we go up enough hill, so maybe we can run and up, run up that hill, Dave, right? Um, I know Dave, uh, it's any, been a while any, since you ran up a hill. Any, any more? <laughs> uh, well, working, uh, working in, in, in Evertrack HQ, I think you, you're a master of puppets. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, is, that is true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, it's great. No, so, uh, obviously, we yeah. go to a lot of places around the world. Um, I yeah. just see Marky e. V say he's never had a buff for being first. Mark, it doesn't happen every time. It's whenever I feel like it, I just kind of throw it out there as a random one. Um, yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's almost like a lottery, but you've got to be in it to win it, maybe one day. But um, anyway, yeah, exactly. so we, we go to a lot of places around the world. And um, one of the things that always fascinates us and um, one of the reasons why we, we're so careful to pick our guides is because the guide experience overall, I think, can change things. And when you get the right guide, you learn yeah. a little bit more as well. I always say a little bit of knowledge greatly enriches your experience. And some of the knowledge yes. is, is amazing. Like, um, you know, uh, obviously you've got the Yeti, um, you know, and there's What's a few Yeti, other... Dave? Um, a yeti, there's kind of these, they waffle on a lot. Um, you know, they're, they're, if you see them in Glencoe, they smell rather dubious. Um, and, not just and, on know, Glencoe, yeah. And I think in South America, you think, is the chupacabra a South American thing? You know, I think it's a South, something like that. Yeah. So, um, we yeah, got a Sasquatch in North, North, North America as well, yeah. yeah they bottle exactly. snowman and anyone else, yeah, exactly. But we call them yetis, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so before we talk about that today and share some of our little yeah. stories and our experiences uh, traveling this globe of ours, and you know, um, I've seen a few monsters, I think, um, 
waking up in the night in Gorek Shep and going to toilet. I think I passed a few in the hallway. Um, that there was definitely, um, you know, some rather rugged looking, smelly creatures walking up and down those corridors. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I just saw Tom there. I find that when you were up in the mountains, nothing else matters. Brilliant. That is, I mean, I'm, honestly, let's do this the whole live. If you can squeeze any Metallica yeah. or Kate Bush on, song, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, get it in because, um, yeah, we're, we're big fans. Yeah, no, I mean, um, especially because the weather today has been absolutely amazing the last few days. I hope all of you have been getting out. Um, yeah, it's been absolutely, the sun has just, it's just been cloud busting. Um, and there's been, um, can anyone get that? Yeah, I think so. Is, um, is that quite niche, Dave? Because uh, uh, well, is, well, is, is that Metallica? It's, 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 it's does Kate Bush, man, cloud busting. Is it Kate Bush? Oh my God. Yeah, man. you need to yeah, up I'm, your Kate I'm Bush not... game. You know, do you my, know who I know Bush knowledge that? is not the good. Do you know who I... Right. <laughs> it's not what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't come but, um, out right. <laughs> yeah, do, do you know one person that I definitely know got that? Fee would have got my Kate Bush reference. She's a good Kate Bush fan. Is, uh, is she is. Kate she is. Bush. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But, um, yeah. So where do we start with this? I guess we start with the Yeti. Well, I think, yeah, it, it goes back because, you know, we, we, over the years we've had some, you know, quite a lot of books on the Himalayas and, you know, you're thinking about all the, yeah, the, the stranger things that happen. And certainly the big one from um, when I was reading about the original uh, 19... Yeah, Fee definitely got that. Um, the 1953 yeah. expedition with Sir Evan Hillary, you know, and, and Tenzin Norgay when they first summited Everest. But actually it was two years before then, 1951, when um, I think it was a previous... I think it was a Swiss expedition, actually, um, which I think Tenzin Norgay was actually on because he was on a couple of expeditions before the British expedition summited. Yeah. And um, I, I believe as well that Eric Shipkin was even, and he was on the um, the 1953 expedition, but he was actually, um, you know, plying his trade, learning bits about the Himalayas. And anyway, in the Everest region, that's where they found the, the Yeti footprints for the very first time. Um, so you can imagine that's pretty much probably what it was like, you know, the early, uh, the early uh, sort of 20th century when they first found some pictures of the Loch Ness monster, right? And, you know, it, it, all legends and myths start somewhere. And, and I think all, as well as that, all legends and myths have a, a small element of fact in them. And, yeah. you know, these footprints, uh, the, the, the photos, you Google it now, 1951 expedition, Yeti, it'll come up and you'll see the pictures. And, you know, they're actually quite cool. But the, um, you know, obviously, uh, Sreb and Hillary being Sreb and Hillary wanted to go and So, um, I might have to pick that up. Is he gone? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, he's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I, I'm on my phone. I had a call come in and it kind of cuts things off. So, I'll try and hopefully I don't get any more calls. I'll see if we can. Um, yeah. yeah, otherwise, I'll have to Do switch. Not disturb, to... Do not disturb. That's what it is, isn't it? Let me see. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go blank for 20 seconds. I'm just going to hit the. Do not disturb so it doesn't happen again. So just hang with me. Be back awesome. in a second. Okay, uh, so yeah, Andy was talking about there about the um yeah, the Edmund Hillary uh uh it's sort of Yeti footprints. I'm not sure were they bound to be like that of a snow leopard or a bear or something like that. I imagine because I know snow leopard have got huge paws, haven't they? Or am I confusing that with a lynx? Anyway, you guys all know your natural history buffs. But um yeah, but it is fascinating. And actually in Kum Jung a little village um, just uh, slightly higher than Namche. They've got um, what's said to be a yak skull. Um, and they actually have, a, uh, there's a guy, like he's, I think he's like a keeper of the skull. And you pay a little bit of money to him and then he'll actually show you it. Um, yeah, and but they say it's the skull of a yeti. So I think it's a yak. But they say it's the skull of a yeti. And it's quite fascinating when you look at it. It's got like a little bit of skull, a little bit of kind of like reddish hair and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, incredibly fascinating. One of the things as well, I mean, let, let's continue this down. I remember waking up in the middle of the night one time thinking I could hear a Yeti because of the howls and things like that that I could hear. But it turned out just to be the hounds of love, um, you know, out there. Ah, Jerome, brown bear. It was a brown bear, Dave. Excellent. There's a few of them out there. Yeah, I thought it would be something like that. Because okay. Of, you know. uh, hey, he's back. He's back. <laughs> Yeah, the, another Yeti's been found. Cool. I, I think I've worked out the do not disturb thing. So hopefully you have my entire focus. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Yeah. Dave, sorry, mate. I disturbed your story there. Um, 
you know, the yeah, was that in Gorek Shep, right? The ghost of Gorek Shep. Uh, I, I actually haven't touched on the ghost of Gorek Shep. Oh, what shit, I was referring to there was that, that was a little, um, you missed, you missed just another little Kate Bush one there. Um, you know, but um, luckily, yeah, I was saying I, I thought I heard a Yeti one night because I heard some howls from outside my window, but it turned out to be the howls of love. Um, and I actually ran out of my room really scared, but this really lovely, homely, babushka-like lady was there um, to kind of calm me down and, and help me and stuff like that. Right, that's that's pretty much it now. That's all my Kate Bush knowledge. <laughs> is that, it? Is that you done, is it? I, I know a lot more Metallica, but I wanted to be niche. And, uh, well, not niche. Kate Bush isn't exactly niche, but, you know, Metallica, yeah. that's easy for me. But, um, yeah, I suppose I could mention the, the, my, the ghost of Gorek Shep, which um, turned out do. to be something a little... A little... <laughs> Yeah, I love that story. I love. We'll definitely come on to that because I, I think that was um, that was a brilliant one. But yeah, we just finished off the Yeti and Dave. I know you mentioned around. It could have been a snow leopard. Was that right? Is that because it? Well, like I said earlier, any 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 kind of myth or legend does have some. There's obviously a reason for it. Yeah. Well, apparently it was a. It's since been discovered to have been a brown bear. Um, ah, that, left, right. that left the prince. I mean, it was always going to be a long <laughs> shot that it was going to be a Yeti. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it was a brown bear. Nice brown bear. And who says I remember that... I'm not even going to verify that. I'm just going to take his word for it. What is he saying? Um, well, that just that it was a brown, brown bear. bear. Dave, brown bear. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. Uh, Kate Bush was in Metallica. Yeah. Um, potentially, Jerome. Potentially. I will have to check on that. I know she's um, she's good on the guitar. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Maybe she's head vocals. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, with the with the Yeti, so they went back. I think it was Sir Edmund Hillary went back in, uh, I think it was 1960-61 expedition to basically investigate the um, the remains that they'd found. Now, you can find these remains. Dave, you mentioned, I think, when I was off, that there's a, a, a the, the r- rumour to be a skull yeti in Kumjum, right, at the moment? Yeah, um, that's it, yeah. Which you can go and see. Yeah, yeah. So you can pay, a, I think, a dollar or a couple of dollars, and they'll actually yeah. show it to you. Yeah. Um, and it's yeah, it's like a little skull cap with some kind of like reddish hair on it and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I think at one point, I think Sir Edmund Hillary wanted to or may of actually <laughs> took it to New Zealand to actually have it tested. If you look up the Yeti yeah. skull, you'll find out a lot of interesting um, sort of knowledge <laughs> about it. And of course, there's a hotel in Kathmandu called the Yak and Yeti. And there is. in the garden area of the Yak and Yeti, <coughs> when they were building the hotel, they found these Yeti footprints in Kathmandu. And um, yeah, that's that's that is so like it's like they knew it before they built it. I know, I know. I <laughs> listen, I am not I am not looking at this with my skeptical hippo eyes. This is I uh, they, they were just they were digging the foundations for hippo hotels eyes. yet to yet to be named. And I think they found the footprints, and that's where it got its name. <laughs> the um, yeah, you mentioned about Sir Edmund Hillary. He actually took it back to London. Um, I remember reading about it. He took it back to the, uh, I think it was uh, the National History Museum, to do some tests to find out if the what it was. So the Nepalese government weren't too happy with him, but he was so loved they forgive him, uh, they forgave him. But yeah, he 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 stole it essentially. Took it over to London to actually investigate if it really was something but I, I won't go too far into it because i kind of feel like i'm spoiling the story the the end yeah. of it anyway and um you know you don't want to tell the whole plot right you want to leave a little bit it's uh you know a little yeah. bit questionable and as you know now if you're on this live you've 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 clearly seen a yeti or two in your time yeah exactly and you know some people say that it is a yeti some people say that it isn't and to those who say that it isn't i say so what you know yeah. let's 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 let the legend live on um, exactly yeah, exactly I, I'm there's something that. cool about it isn't it yeah jimbo blues has said uh um, he gets the blues coming down from the mountains um he doesn't like it but it's uh it's sad but true um you know and um the thing is you've got to be careful when you're going down those mountains because quite often um in the himalaya you know there are very real lots of wildlife living there i've seen little like grain squirrels and things like that and uh, yeah. quite often they'll look at you and they'll be like you know don't tread on me you know so um yeah you have to be careful is that another song? That's a Metallica song, yeah. That's a Metallica song. Wow. See, I'm thinking now. Anything that I think you wouldn't normally say that, I'm thinking that's yeah. a song. <laughs> I think you might have got. I think so. What might have got past you as well? That was a Metallica one. Oh, oh actually, was was that, it? Ah, actually, it wasn't. Right. It was originally from a band called um, Anti Nowhere League, that was some sort of British post punk band, um, and they, um, they, they Metallica covered it. 
Yeah. See, all we got to do, look, is mention, uh, you know, Metallica or Kate Bush. And look, at I'm just reading through all the comments now. It's a great way to kind of get some different words in there. But well done, guys. It's nice to see yeah. your musical knowledge is very, very good. Um, but yeah, anyway, so we're talking about these kind of things. I think another big one, Dave, I think we'll talk about is um, the mountain gods, because the mountains are, are, are worshipped, you know, just as, uh, you know, especially in, um, you know, the, the Hindu uh, Buddhist religion yeah. in Buddhism, and also as well in in, the, in Sherpa life, you know the the mountains are treated as, as deities or gods. Like you know, you all heard of um, you know Everest being called Sagamartha or Chungmalungma, or actually as the Sherpa people call it, which is Mialung Sama. Um, you know, which is what is it? A mother goddess of the earth, Dave, isn't it? I believe. That's uh, Chungmalungma. Is translation. Chungmalungma uh, is mother goddess. Uh, of the earth. Mother goddess of the earth. Yeah. Um, Everest is it's quite itself fascinating. A, a deity. Yeah, and, yeah, um, and it's it's quite interesting to, to 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 see how people view it. Like it before an Everest expedition, you may have seen, you know, if you've watched like Fourteen Peaks or you've seen Sherpa the documentary, um, you would have seen that they do um, their puja ceremony, which is basically them um, kind of getting permission really to climb the mountain before they set up on the expedition. Um, and you might see these things happen in Everest Base Camp um, or any base camp that you go to. It's quite fascinating to, to see the dedication of of how much it means to them. And I think yeah. it, it leads on to, as well, you're talking about mountains and, and gods and things like that. And, and we were talking, I mean, just before this, I know we've read quite a lot of books on, you know, uh, climbers who have cl summited Everest but come into difficulty. And actually look, quite a lot of the mountains in the Himalayas. And especially the some, quite a lot who, who barely clung to life. And some of them yeah. come down, literally give the same story, which is that there's actually like, um, and it's always, it's generally female, but it's like holds their hand and guides them down the mountain as if it's like a protective, you know, they're, they're, you know these are the people that survived, obviously, and, and to live and to tell the tale. And they always talk about the same thing, which is, you know, so that was going through my mind. Okay, you know, I, uh, you know we're, we're, we're quite, we're open-minded, aren't we, Dave? And we're thinking, you know, was that... Um, you know, some spiritual lead them down or, you know, were they borderline hypoxic and their brain was creating something that was come out for survival that would lead them down. Um, and which is almost quite interesting the way it's written in, in certain books. Um, and certainly, you know, makes you think about things. But what well, whilst we're talking about that with altitude, Dave, because I, I know we touched on it before, bringing it back to make it relevant. I think that goes to show that, you know, when you're at altitude, you, your brain can can do funny things to you right it can play with your yeah. mind yeah no i think yeah and uh, i think my i think that it is yeah it's like when you're when you're hypoxic and you know yeah. often there's a lot of things hypoxic dehydrated sleep deprived i think yeah you're um yeah your, your brain can do some amazing things to kind of i don't know either help you down or stuff like yeah. that you know it's it's or whether it's just to kind of comfort you in your last moment, I don't know. It's um, it's a strange thing for for whom the bell tolls when that happens. <laughs> but um, I know that one. Yeah, and it's it is yeah. I mean, and sometimes it's you know it, it's whatever you need to get you down. Uh, you know, for Kathmandu where there's whiskey in the jar. But I think um, yeah, no, it is fascinating, and it, it actually, like I said, happened to me in um. It, it, he said, "Has Dave tattooed his face?" I was going to say, Dave, any any new ones, mate? You got to... maybe they're seeing the the one on on here, Dave. But oh, you've there. had that for like four or five years now. Oh, that's years and years, yeah, years old. That one. Um, don't think I've tattooed my face. Yeah, um, yeah so, uh, <laughs> don't get my dears. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, we were down there, and um, Dave's got a new tattoo. What has no one ever seen this before? Like, is, is it because we've flipped and then it's like I'm normally that maybe side. it is maybe because you're you're it's part of you you're showing part of you that people haven't seen before yeah surely people have met me in person though and seen that anyway um yeah so i remember me and <laughs> billy it was um uh the first one oh i'm back to normal i went a bit weird on screen apparently okay that's that's uh, uh yeah so myself and my friend billy i have my first ever trip to everest base camp um yeah and we were lying in bed in gorek shep and it is funny what the hypoxia and stuff can do to you because I remember waking up in the night and yeah. I could hear, hello, <laughs> help, help. And I remember waking up and I woke up on my own in the dead of night and I was like, yeah, did I hear that? No, I didn't hear anything. Is it my brain? 
where's my Dymox? <laughs> you know, and then <laughs> put my head back on the pillow. And then I heard a yeah. very definite like, help. And I was like, shit. And yeah. isn't it strange that the first thing didn't think to me, like this is all very quick. Like it wasn't like I left this, I left this for 10 minutes. It was like very quick. And I was like, my God. And I was looking out the window, <laughs> like scraping the ice off. And then all of a sudden my friend Billy, who was much have had much more oxygen in his blood than me, sort of sprung up and went, there's someone in the toilet. <laughs> and what had happened is <laughs> the girl who was in the room next to us went a couple of doors down to the toilet and someone else was walking down in the dark using the wall and slid the bolt across. So she was completely trapped in the Gorek Shep toilet, which is its own special kind of hell, to be fair. And, um, <laughs> that is the upside like, down. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, Billy jumped up and helped her, and I was left feeling like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I thought. Yeah, someone in the toilet, of course. <laughs> you know, but there was a brief moment where I was like, mm, the ghost of Gorek Shep. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, well, the thing is, I think, and again, Dave, when you're – you're struggling to sleep and you you know, you are tired. Your brain does play some funny things. It does do some funny things to you, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes I, I know um, a lot of people who, who maybe slept above 5,000 meters, especially if you've had a, a, a night at Gorek Shep and it's your first time there. Quite a lot of people wake up with the, uh, it's almost like, <gasps> it's like you're, you're kind of, it's sort of similar to sleep apnea where yeah. you, you, your body is, is naturally kind of wake you up to, um, to, to get some oxygen in. Yeah. And, you know, that, that can be quite scary. But I, I think whilst we're talking about it, um, you know, and if you haven't been in that situation before, just try not to, to, to worry about too much. It's, it's your body um, basically just trying to help itself. Yeah. Um, you know, and it can be quite scary if you haven't seen it before or felt it before. But if, if that does happen to you on a regular basis, then I, I would be chatting to your guide and potentially looking at, um, you know, doing something about it, whether that means maybe taking some Diamox because it, because that does help, uh, you know, your, your body or altitude um, at that point. Um, then, yeah, definitely, definitely get chatting to your guide about that. And, you know, don't don't hide these things from your guide. I think anything that we go through, sometimes we think if we tell someone, they think we're nuts, um, which, you know, can be true, especially if you're like, there was a ghost last night. And obviously, we found out it was a woman locked in a room uh, or locked in the toilet. Um but actually just you know it's, it's okay to talk about these things um you know when you're up there and you know wherever you are on a trip um even if you go higher than than, than five thousand meters you know if you're on mera peak for instance or island peak or if you think back on kagua you know the the, the the you know your body is getting pushed to its limits and yeah. when the body gets pushed to its limits that's when the funny things start to happen yeah exactly i mean um i'm gonna start bringing in some of these um metallic nice. i think so um yeah t tom tom he's on it he's on it are um, they lyrics yeah that's from enter sandman yeah oh is it yeah was it you I'll 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 if you one I open, gripping my pillow i should start playing it shouldn't i so we can all yeah we should have the tap you've got your guitar song. in there as well you got, you got to crank out the guitar day it's a display model only <laughs> <laughs> uh we'll see we'll see we'll see yeah, uh, yeah. What's Emily um, saying? Oh, God, it'll be a nightmare. I have enough ghost experiences at sea level. Well, Emily, isn't it something to look forward to, though, right? You come, you come back with all these crazy stories you uh, you can recount. Yeah. Um, you get tired because life is like a battery. Brilliant. Yeah, these are fantastic. We should do this more often, right? We should just, like, we don't even need a subject or any content. We can just, I know. You know, we can just have a pun war the whole time. I'm so but proud no. of Evertrackers getting all these lyrics and all these song names because i i yeah i'm struggling <laughs> yeah. Which means I, I feel like i need my laptop next to me so i can google like metallica songs yeah and i'd um, i'd be all right then yeah but the thing is whenever you like, go off screen you just fade to black um... i know oh. <laughs> that, that's probably my favorite one i think i think that's that's yeah good. that is yeah. that is that's high level that is dave yeah exactly but um, <laughs> well, well, I, knew, I knew all of, i knew all of these years just listening to metal would kind of pay off you know um oh yeah shona was saying no, fish pun day things. was yeah shona was there she remembers we i think we had fish pun day which was quite good we did, we did. um yeah the thing is I, i'll be honest with you right i never used to like puns i considered them irritating but andy He's the he's the pun master, and you've got to fight fire with fire. Sometimes you're on a long <laughs> you're on a long trek together. It's ten hours of punning, then the next thing you know, you you're punning. And um, yeah, I think Fee she loves a pun as well. She um, 
she's yeah. been yeah i think she she enjoys a pun or two now yeah she, yeah she i loves think it, when, loves it, loves i it. think i think when we're in the office and we're having a little bit of fun and we're dropping the pun wars <laughs> i think she's like keep going guys keep going <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm more but, of a free um, man when I get back to Namchi. I'll be all right now. Ah, very good. They've moved on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we've moved on. We're starting to springboard now, I think, aren't we? Uh, who's is that, dog is who? barking in the background? Yeah, that's my neighbor's dog. I, um, I remember that. I remember that dog the last time because we're basically the office. Um, again, we're, we're talking about little stories and um, myths and legends. Well, some, some truth is, yeah, the office at the moment is um, it's not very good in the heat because our aircon is broken, so we can't. It was uh we, we had to we're working remotely at the moment um yeah hence the reason why dave is at home and i'm on the road yep exactly it's too hot i can't handle it but um oh, i what... found something sherpa woman attacks though i had to look at that Lack of... yeah um wow. do you know what funny enough i recently just read a book it was yeah. a travel book by the comedian dom jolly um and it's awesome. called and it's called scary monsters and super creeps um, okay. I, I actually highly recommend it because there is a section of that story where he goes in search of the Yeti and he treks up to Kumjung. So really, yeah, and he follows the trail up past Namchi. Um, Brilliant. And, he's, and it's, he talks about it in there that apparently there are two types of. Um, I think that woman who was attacked by one. Yeah. Um, I think she was actually it was going for her cattle and then she was kind of in the way. And they said that there's two types of yak. There's a man attacker and an animal attacker. Um, and then we uh, it was a bit of a debate of what type of um, yeti this one was. Sorry, and uh, right, it, was, okay. it, was, it was it was a it was an animal attacker. She was just in the way. And uh, yeah, he talks about this, and he talks about he goes to Japan, and there's um, apparently an irradiated monster in the hills around Hiroshima called the Hibagon. Um, that's really awesome. There's in this is there's a really weird one in the congo and it's called the mokalian mokalian bembe which is like a right. loch ness monster type thing or like a big thing that lives in the swamps in the jungle yeah um and then there's ogopogo in canada which lives yeah. in lake okanagan and that's another loch ness type thing it's amazing honestly um I highly recommend the book. I got to check this book out. This sounds quite interesting. Yeah, it's a really good book. And uh, I didn't realize that, yeah, Dom Jolly's reinvented himself as something of a travel writer. And he's done a lot of these things. And he goes around doing these unusual travels. And it's about all the mishaps he has and stuff like that. It's it's really quite good. So, um, yeah, I think if you're due on a trek soon and you're heading out to base camp or Kilimanjaro and you want a reading companion, that is a definite uh, good book to come to lighten the mood and, and, yeah, keep you entertained on your track imagine reading that whilst on malarone on kilimanjaro yeah be imagine the dreams you'll have yeah it'd be pretty intense and malarone um, is um yeah, i know we we did one about uh, injections um and vaccination stuff malarone is an uh, anti-malarial drug which is very very interesting yeah yeah it's certainly very um, interesting yeah you're supposed to take it in the morning um yeah. so by the time you go to sleep it's sort of a it's sort of lowest lowest ebb but if you're like me and Andy, you'll occasionally forget to take it in the morning and have to take it in the <laughs> before bed. And um, yeah, it's like going to an IMAX in your dreams. It's uh, it's amazing. But um, guys, <laughs> as well, you know, we, 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 we love talking about this stuff as well. But any yeah. questions you have on it, Andy? But, you know, anything that goes, fire away. Yeah, yeah. And also as well, um, because, you know, it, you're all trekkers and travelers and adventurers like us. You know, um, you know, we're talking about our experiences. Drop in the comments if you've had any crazy stories while traveling. Maybe... Who knows? Maybe you bumped into the Loch Ness monster. You know, maybe you, um, you know, uh, maybe when you're last in the Himalayas, you had a glimpse of a footstep. You went, "Ooh, what's that?" Um, yeah. yeah, it's interesting to, to kind of hear about your stories as well. So drop in the comments because, um, you know, it's always good to see whatever stories there are there. And also yeah. as well, whilst we're we're waiting, um, just a couple of a couple of announcements because we've got um, our October training weekend, which we've um, it's been great. We've seen heaps of people book in. But we still got about 10 plus places at the moment. So definitely get that booked in. Fee, I know you're on the comments. If you can drop that in. Um, I believe it's in, uh, what is it? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head now. I think it's the 20th of October, Dave, something like that. Maybe a bit earlier. Or am I the wrong yeah. weekend? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll tell, like, tell you what. Why don't you move on to the second announcement? Okay. Um, uh, you know, we never, we never let professionalism get in the way of a good show. <laughs> Um, <laughs> sure, sure, it, sure. Well, whilst you're Googling, yeah, no, I don't know what you're on about, man. I'm not. 
um, well, whilst we're talking about that, next week, um, I think it's a week Thursday, um, we'll do a little quiz, a uh, virtual quiz. Uh, we, you've probably um, heard about it um, on the, in the group. Uh, also, uh, we're just picking it out on email. Um, you know, and it's really good for Brecken Mountain Rescue, so raising money for, for Brecken Mountain Rescue, like we have over the last 18 months. Um, yeah, if you want to join us, that would be awesome. Uh, you know, it's going to be a fun quiz, be a laugh. Um, I think it starts at eight o'clock on the um, on the Thursday, uh, the twenty first, I believe. Um, fee, if you're on the comments as well, if you can drop those in just to get registered for the quiz, because um, yeah, we're really excited. I think we've only got about I think seventeen, eighteen people joined at the moment. So it'd be great if we can get you know more people in. So it'd be great if you're if you're available that evening. Um, mm. Uh, we also, as well, if, if you do want to, it, 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 regarding uh, making a donation, which would be awesome, uh, it's £5 to Breckham Mountain Rescue, and the link um, will be sent to you after you uh, register, um, which is great. So, yeah, definitely, if you uh, if you fancy that, do it. Uh, there we go. There's the dates for the training weekend. 21st, see, I knew, I knew, you were yeah. so far off. 21st, 23rd of October, so get yourself on there. Um, we got one in August, but that, that's been kind of sold out for a while. Um, so we wanted to, to do another one. And also then we've got a bunch of dates for other trips um, coming into winter. And Dave, I believe that we've got um, some dates coming up for the winter skills in Wales uh, yes, and in yeah. Scotland. Yeah, exactly. So stay tuned. They'll be going up um, today. Um, okay. We will be reaching out to those people that have inquired about that as well. So um, yeah. yeah, 100% they'll be going up today. Um, I'm, just confirming, awesome. I'm just confirming the last date uh, with Steve, the mountain guide um yeah Great which stuff. is really what's really interesting about the training weekends as well that um steve the mountain guide is going to be there sort of like plowing yep. the way for us as well um so it's going to be great to have his knowledge on the training weekend as well because not yep. only has he got um a really rich sort of mountaineering history he's incredibly knowledgeable um and it means that he can have all of the responsibility while me and andy just chat about um monsters and altitude um, <laughs> yeah so brilliant, yeah, brilliant. Um, also, and there's one other thing as well that if we don't mention, we're going to get shouted at, um, okay? Because it's really kind of cool. Is um, the uh, British Travel Awards? Oh wow! How did I forget about that? <laughs> How did I forget about that? Because we've been we've been um, well, we're in the final now, aren't we? Uh, for the, the British Travel Awards, where um, yeah, exactly. We've been nominated, which is great. Um, yeah, which is amazing to win an award and and get the recognition. Um, yeah. But it's not just uh, an anonymous panel of judges yeah. that are deciding this. It's decided by the community, the general public, um, the, yeah. the general public, the surrounding this thing. And something tells me that we've got a pretty good community that can back us up. So um, <laughs> B is going to post the link. I'm going to throw it, and in a minute it'll land in the comments. Um, but yeah, if you can do that and cast a vote for us, that would be uh, much much appreciated because. Um, yeah, it's it's really nice to it get a lot. on the back every now and again. It means a lot, and everything we yeah. do, we do, um, you know, for for you guys. And yeah, it's just uh, yeah, it'd be awesome to win. Exactly, exactly. The uh, yeah, because th this one for British Travel Awards is one of the first really opportunities we've had. I mean, you know, we've been you know on this journey now for six years or so, and um, you know, yeah, to get into the British Travel Awards is obviously a challenge, but. Now we've got an opportunity as well for, like, like Dave said, you know, if people vote for us, um, you know, we've got a chance of, of, of winning that, um, which would be amazing. And, and the actual category is uh, best, you know, it, they have all these wonderful categories and we wish they had a specific one for like just best trekking company. But this one is a little bit different. It's best walking trekking holiday company. But, you know, the, the trekking bit, just keep the trekking bit, mm. you know, um, you know, and that's that would be great to win that one. Um, you know, we, we, we we like to think we know what we're doing. We, 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 you know, we have fun with our ever trackers. Um, you know, we know we, we provide, um, you know, good trips and, and also we have good teams on the ground. So yeah, it'd be a, be really, really cool to, to win that. Um, and yeah, I don't know. We've got an awesome community, uh, you know, and we never ask for favors, but if, if we can ask a favor, that would be amazing. Um, yeah. if you, if you were to vote for us, that would be, that would be great. No worries. Um, uh, I've literally just, um, I'm doing several things at once here. I'm communicating <laughs> with the back office, um, but a link shall be making its way to the comments now. Um, Legend. Yeah, for everyone that can do that. Yeah, great stuff. I, I know the, the link, 
I know we're literally firing all at the same time. So the training weekend is on there if you want to book onto that. Um, and then we've got the quiz, the charity quiz, if you wanted to jump onto that. Um, now, obviously, if you if you miss these links, no worries. We'll be popping them in the group as well. Um, so you don't miss those. And if, you know, if you're watching on YouTube or if you're on uh, listening on a podcast, we'll also put them in the show notes. So you've got exactly where. Um, yeah, here we go. Oh, there it is. Look, and as if by magic. Uh, fee and Shona, Shona clearly because you know we, she pretty much works for us these days. Uh, <laughs> well done, Shona. Um, yeah, she's um, she's they they both put the links there, so fantastic. Uh, awesome. Yeah, vote, vote for uh, .php. Yes, yeah, good. I I, I I I want to click on them, but obviously we can't vote. Um, but yeah, so it's down to our ever trackers. Can we not, so can we not vote? Well, I've been signing up like to about 50 different email addresses <laughs> all morning just to get the votes in. You know, Donald Duck, <laughs> Mickey Mouse, James Hetfield, Kate Bush. Um, they've all they've all been doing it, you know. So um what about eleven? Yeah. Uh I've done eleven votes. Yeah, I've done eleven votes. <laughs> and um yeah, very good, very good. yeah. The problem is my first vote is becoming a bit problematic. Um never mind. That was a bit tenuous, wasn't it? But um yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Georgie, so, where is he today? Air conditioning shaft. Wow. Yeah, that man. He finds himself into some strange places, doesn't he? He's, um, yeah, he, that is brilliant. That is, um, Georgie. Honestly, honest, you should. Though, we did put your comments and make a wall of your comments. That'd be quite funny. I tell you what, not stupid though. This kind of weather. Which job you're going to volunteer for? To literally sit inside an air conditioning shaft is my idea of heaven right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, talking about. Um, amazing stories as well i have to share a story and that i shared with everyone on our team meeting this morning but you would have missed it so yesterday andy yes. went up the the brecon beacons um and then i didn't because it was too hot and uh, i was gonna go with yesterday the gym, but that was too hot so i decided to go out on my mountain bike and yeah i was on my own going down this trail it's a downhill trail and i you know me yeah. and you know if, if it's not fast it's not fun but over my head Literally, I felt the swoop through my helmet, a buzzard flies over, stops, wow. up, stops at eye level, and glides ahead of me down the trail for about Amazing. five Amazing. It was about five, maybe ten seconds. I'm not sure exactly. Probably more like five, but it felt like longer. And literally just, it was like a, it was like having my own trail guide. And it, it literally stuck in front of me like that. And then the last minute then swooped off into the trees. It that is was, awesome. It, I, and you know what? Out of all the ones, I didn't have my GoPro on. But yeah. do you know what? It reminded me of something nice you said moment. before. One of your favourite um, movies was uh, The Curious Life of Walter Witty. Secret you know when he, yeah, and, yeah. And, he, and he goes looking for that snow leopard. Yeah. And then he goes, that's just for me, that one. Exactly. You know, exactly. And, yeah. yeah, so I thought I was watching that and I was just like, uh, that was just for me. That was that was a nice little uh, nice little moment. But it um, is good. That is if and, and talking about um, because on there is fantastical beasts and everything and um, you know in that movie specifically. If you want a, any inspiration to go traveling, watch the Secret Life of Walter Mitty. It is brilliant. I, I, you know, I watched it years back. I actually downloaded it and took it with me the very first time I went to Everest Base Camp just for because I was on my own. And um, yeah, watching that. And then see it at the end, which is actually they go into, um, I think it was the Karakoram region of uh, Pakistan, uh, which is quite interesting. And yeah, and he, and he meets Sean Penn, who was the photographer. He makes a bit of a cameo role. And he's just about to take and, and the, the kind of snow leopard walks through his lens. And uh, yeah, what Dave said there, where he said, like, um, you know, sometimes I don't take take it, you know, and that's for me. And I think that's, that's a good way to do it. You know, like, I think all of us. You know, I think society these days, isn't it? And uh, you know, I don't want to go too deep, but um, you know, we all share a lot of things on social media, and some, sometimes we don't. You know, sometimes we like to keep those moments just for ourselves or our families, and you know. Um, but it's nice to see, you know, on the flip side of that, so many people and all of you in our community, and especially in the end, and the, the Facebook yeah. group, and all the ever trackers, um, you know, sharing their journey, um, so we can see how you're getting on and your training, and it's very inspiring. And don't forget. You know, people are on their different parts of their journey and you're posting, you know, things that you get out there, you know, in the mountains, you're putting in the hard work to make the trekking easy. And, you know, you could, you're inspiring people as well. Don't forget yeah. that. You know, we always, we always think, you know, we, you're looking for someone to inspire you, but imagine what you're doing, what you, what, what you achieve, what that can do for your friends, your family, your kids. 
Yeah. Um, and that's always something to just to be be proud of as well. So yeah, just just a little thought there. Yeah. Um, awesome. But I need to watch. Wow. You know, terribly Go on, going uh, uh, John and I just talked to John earlier. <laughs> I just it's John. Name, Dave. Yeah, that's the group. That was because I was chatting to the Greek bald yeti before I took this live. Yeah. But um, yeah, um, I haven't seen it. Do you know what though? I'm going to watch wow. it this evening. I'm going to watch it this evening because it really does sound like an amazing film. But you know what it's like. I'm like, I, I'm not the be- like. I've seen a lot of films, but then sometimes Andy will say, "Have you seen this?" And I haven't. And then I find out later that it's like groundbreaking, and I've missed it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but well, um, some of these, some of these awesome films are, 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 yeah, some of these films are awesome. Do you know what? Um, but we we only got a certain amount of time in life, haven't we? We got to we got to choose. Yeah. What we do. You know, Leah might be able to. Um, uh, spread some information to me about this one type of like scary beast i've heard a rumor about the drop bear um okay apparently a drop bear is a type of dangerous koala you know and i yeah. actually found out what it was because um this is like plugging another little company now but when we were winning our last award they're coming thick and fast at the moment um we i was sat next to um these two girls um, and they were they run a company called Drop Bear Beer, which is ah, nice. like like it's this non alcoholic um, uh, craft beer. And, yeah. Um, yeah, they call it Drop Bear, and apparently it's about this koala that will just sort of sit in the tree, and as you go past, it just kind of like jumps on you. Um, Brilliant. Yeah, I, I I would love that. I think that would be amazing if a really cute, cuddly, beautiful koala just dropped out, catch him, or he's giving a little ruffle. Isn't it, Leah? Oh, a little fella. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Although she uh, she has posted and, and and said they're not bears, Dean. Well, they are. They're koala bears. So. <laughs> brilliant, yeah. brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, whatever they are, they're, they're certainly beautiful. I, I remember. I'm not sure if I said this before. You talk about drop bears and what drop koalas. Uh, we should have a rival company, Dave, called Drop Koalas. Um, and I was I was trekking um, in uh, where was it? Was it Victoria? Yeah, I think it was Victoria in, in some woodland. Um, or you could call it bush. See how I got that in there. Nice, um, nice. Uh, in um, in Aust- in Victoria, and yeah, we were walking, and then after about two miles, we saw this sign saying "Beware of koalas" because apparently it was, they're dangerous sometimes. Yeah. And I looked up, and in the, where the sign was, directly above it, there was a koala growling, looking angry. So we we I took a picture and, and kind of walked on. But I just thought, how is that? That's hilarious. Mm. Then. That koala chose to climb the exact tree that was above a sign warning koalas, and I just, I, I just remembered that. Just, I can't just, imagine just, a koala sorry. being angry. I just can't do it. Apparently, in mating season, they can get a bit feisty. Well, yeah, but can't we all? But you know, <laughs> <laughs> that, doesn't, that, that doesn't mean they're not very nice. Koalas are lovely. Um, they're stinky, grumpy little a holes with teeth that they and teeth, and they will bite you. Yeah, but everything <laughs> in Australia bites you, doesn't it? You know, so. Um, they're like at least they're not venomous. Are they venomous? I they might be. Uh, Do you know I what? So, no. uh, I found out the other day that um, what's that little uh, platypus? They've yep. got venomous little spurs in their ankles, apparently. Really? And, um, yeah, but apparently, really strange animal. The platypus, really strange. strange I think when strange, they first strange. found it and sent it back to the UK yep. for study, they thought that it was a joke. Um, and they thought that people had like stitched the body of like an otter to the bill of a duck. And uh, the webbed feet of like something else, and yeah, but apparently they've got little spurs on there. And apparently, if they get you, they're not, they're not, they're not nice. But um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just reading what Emily saying. Well, wasn't it you, Dave? That had some experience with a pigeon or some sort of bird thing? Sure, I remember it on the line. No, it's entirely possible. I do have a pigeon story, but I, you'll have to ask me in person about it. Fee's <laughs> <laughs> asking a drop bears related to wombles. I wonder. Um, what, the, Wimble- the Wimbledon wombles? Yeah, I think so. Uh, and they have chlamydia right here. Wow. wow. Is that the platypus okay. or is that the koala? <laughs> Either way, I've held both. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. No surprises awesome. there. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a, Next week, we'll do kit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, we're, um, we're going off piece here a bit. I, mean, I suppose we are. Yeah. This is this is literally Tuesday tuned in the upside, upside down version. But we yeah. haven't answered any question yet. Which yeah. we're still forty-five minutes in. Um, wow, <laughs> nice, Kev. Nice. Um, uh, it's a slightly different, uh, you know, program this week. But um, 
yeah, we uh, we're, we're trying to keep it clean. Try, you know. I can't promise anything because, uh, yeah. you know, we we've all uh, seen those documentaries and uh, <laughs> brilliant. Um, also, as well, do because um, Dave, I'm thinking questions wise. I know we've had a, a couple from John from Brecon, but they were, to be honest, we I feel like we've already discussed the um, the kind of things that he was asking. But what should we what should we what should we focus on next? I know we've um, well, I got a question like from Andrew Scott, screen. who's emailed one in. Okay. Um, yeah, and this this might sort of career us back onto the trekking world. Um, but he yeah. said his uh, on his last trip in EBC about four years ago, he uh, tipped the guide a hundred pounds on a port of seventy five. That's really generous of you. Um, that yeah. was from two people. You've seen lots of vlogs which talk about percentages of the cost of your trek. Obviously, a larger group can contribute yeah. a much larger collective amount. As a trekking company, what is our current advice to your clients? So you are right that obviously. You know, I think if there's only two of you um, and yeah. uh, 175, that, that seems pretty fair. Obviously, yeah. that was four years ago as well. Um, so that was a very generous tip. What we generally advise as a guide is yeah. 10% of the trip cost put aside for, tr for tips that you will then pull yeah. together with the others on your group and then divvy up. Um, it's not an exact science because obviously tipping is um something that's you know it's not like a like a regimented cost what we've tried to do to make it easier is say as a guide 10 yeah. percent of the trip cost so if yeah. your trip is 1900 pounds put aside 190 um, um pounds and then convert it into dollars or local currency and then what generally tends to happen is so an example at the end of an ebc trip um, there's me, Andy, a few other guys. We all put yeah. our tips in, and then we'll look at it. Okay, so we've got the head guide, the assistant guide, and this many porters. And then we kind of yeah. just divvy it up, knowing that head guide gets the most, assistant guide gets the second, the second largest, and then the porters get the rest. And then we look at it and we think, well, actually, if we move that there and give that there, the porters get this much extra, and we just get yeah. an amount that feels right. Um, but what I always can say as well that that's as simple and as complicated as it needs to be. If you are yeah. struggling at any point, you can always pull aside the head guide and say, listen, we want to give out tips. This is what we've kind of got um, yeah. and what we've established. Do you think this is fair? And they'll always almost certainly say, yes, that's fair. Or, you know, they'll exactly. Yeah. In Tanzania, yeah, nice day. in Tanzania, they'll give you a little sheet even at the end with the list of the staff. And you can just write down what amounts you want to give to them. Yeah. But the head guide will help you again. So there's no need to ever struggle with this issue. You've got the team in Tanzania. You've got us back in the UK. But talk to your guide and be open and honest. A lot of people yeah. tend to be a bit coy and a bit shy about tips. But you can honestly just go up to them and say, we're going to tip you, obviously. You know, let's have a, we want to give you a reward for everything you've done for us. Yeah, yeah. But I want to make sure that it's right. So this is what we've got. This is what we think. And they'll help you. And would you agree? Yeah, 100%. I mean... It's always one of those things, tips. I think ever, ever since we, you know, history, mankind, I think <clears throat> um, tips and providing them has always been, you know, one of those one of those challenges because you you're not, you you want to make sure that you give give the right amount to to keep the nice feeling, don't you? And you know, we I've met and chat to loads of people who are like, you know, what is right culturally and what is what is kind of expected then, and you know, is is it you know, do I have to? You know, we do get some people, um, you know, historically. And we say no, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, we don't, we don't force you to, but it's, you know, it's, um, it's kind of culturally expected in nearly all the places we go on. And I like to think, you know, in the Evertrek community now, and, um, you know, all the Evertrekkers on trips, I know and met a lot of you, you know, hundreds and hundreds of you, and, you know, you're all nice people. And I know, you know, obviously, you don't want to go into overdraft for this stuff, you know, you want to make sure you can, what, what you can afford. Um, but I know it means a lot to them um you know the guys and, and the work they do and yeah it, it really does mean a lot so yeah if you like dave said if you can if you can budget for 10 percent um because i know you know we read the news like everyone else and we know that prices are going up for a lot of things flights you know insurance day day-to-day -day living you know is going up so we know things might be a bit <clears throat> kind of stretched you know so um, we realize that when when the trip comes and you, you've got a certain amount of budget, you know, um, you obviously want to um, balance that between doing the right thing and giving the, a nice amount and, 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 and being able to afford stuff. So, yeah, do, do think that. And then as Dave said, always lean on your guide or, you know, um, you know, or if you if, if one of the group feels, you know, maybe is a bit more comfortable with doing that, 
do that as well and, and a nice little kind of um sometimes you know you don't have to do this because i know it's not everyone's cup of tea but sometimes a nice little ceremony and a little bit of a you know if you can find any envelopes or something to put it in to give to the, the guides the assistant guides or whatever that can be nice and it's a bit of a ceremony it's a bit of a celebration and yeah like um we also did a wee bit of speech to thank everyone personally i think tina's mentioned you know and that, that goes a long way a really long way because i think what if they're a porter assistant guide a guide um maybe if you know if you're in certain certain trips and you've got like muleteers or people who are looking after the yaks you know after a while and, and you, you're bantering with them you're chatting with them like they become friends um you know and, and i think it's, it's, it's sometimes just nice to reward those friends you know when they're um when they look after you and they've, they've helped you on your journey. Um, yeah. And I know, yeah, some really nice comments here as well. But uh, yeah. Uh, a tips expected for safari guys. I think that was Suzette. Um, yeah, you can do certainly. I mean, any driver, any, anyone that offers you a service or does something, you don't have to, but I feel it's like a nice touch, you know? Yeah. Um, I'd say with the safari guides, um, because essentially, you know, obviously they're guiding you, they're, they're taking you around and showing you the different, different places yeah just again maybe with with that particular trip uh, because it's kind of a little bit of a side trip dave what would you recommend for the safari would you yeah so one of them is so we do we do generally i would say it's yeah it's a difficult one to say like a percentage or an amount yeah i always say but give us safari gen- yeah. yeah give as generously as you can is my advice because with the safari yeah. guys they are with you for a couple of days two three four five days um you know and they do you know rely on the tips in order to um you know improve their quality of life and continue doing what they're doing so i would say yes do reward them with that by giving them a tip and tip them as generously as you can um i think it depends on like the length of the safari if it's like a two-day safari i don't know maybe you could give him like i don't know forty dollars twenty dollars a day like that you know that feels about right to me um you know a lot of people give some more no one's asking you to go into your overdraft or anything like that what we are saying is that you know they work really hard they make these trips possible for us without the guides and things like that yeah you should always give them when it comes to drivers you know just a couple of dollars here and there certainly helps you know it just goes a long way if everybody they gave a lift who gave them a couple of a couple of dollars yeah um it goes a long way for those guys with the with the safari guys yeah maybe twenty dollars a day um i'm just putting that out there off the top of my head but that feels about right to me if I was on a trip with Andy and we discussed that type of thing, I think that's something we might land on. Um, yeah. Lovely. And then, you know, and like Andy said, you know, there's a lot of, when when we think about, when you break down a trip, a, you know, a lot of it that people see is like what's on the surface, you know, you arrive and everything's really nice and you go on a trip and you've got your guide, but then you don't realize that there's obviously the drivers that we use, the drivers, you know, have to maintain the vehicle. So then there are mechanics and things that have to be paid for. There's the fuel yeah. that has to be paid for um, and all sorts of stuff like this, you know. So, um, you know, the money that we pay them goes a long way to keeping that business going. And the tips you go, that's direct to the individual, improves their quality mm-hmm. of life and they can buy gifts for their family and all sorts of stuff. And, you know, so, exactly, yeah. exactly. It's uh, Tina saying there, cried as it was so emotional, loved it so much. And our guys were so awesome. I yeah. also tip the taxi guys. Tina, love it, mate. Love it. Tina's so nice. <laughs> yeah. Now, well done. Well done. I saw a good question, actually. Um, I think Jerome was asking it because I know he's been on, on Killy. Um, and it is quite different. So uh, Jerome's asked, um, not about rocks this time. So he's gone a bit differently. So uh, are, you, are you allocating a personal porter on EBC? So, yeah, it's um, it's slightly different on the Everspace Camp Trek. So the porters um, who do carry your bags, whereas on, I, I think, on summit night on Killy, um, I know this is something we do, and then Jerome, I'm not sure if it was if it was like it was for you, is that um, on summit night we usually do one to one with the porters. So if you you know if you're struggling, they can take your bag off you. On base camp, it's very similar to that on say base camp day, or some of the assistant guides because there's not as many porters on Everest base camp as it is on Killy, because Killy normally like say group of ten, you'll probably have thirty porters. Because you've got the, the porters for the baggage, you've got porters for the who look after the tents, um, you've got people who look after the toilets, and you've got food, you've got the gas, you've got lots of different um, groups. Whereas it's it is a lot less porters on Everest Base Camp Trek. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're well looked after, Jerome. Definitely. Um, there, there's more than enough there. Um, make sure you you're all good, mate. And uh, yeah, yeah, I love it. 
Every little helps. I work at Tesco, by the way. Brilliant. Love it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I think with EBC, isn't it? It's a case of like each porter will carry two to three yeah. bags, depending on the weight of those bags. So it's not like you have one porter that you kind of get to know. But as Andy said, some of them you will kind of get to know more than others because yeah. if they help you out on Calipatar or on EBC and they do a little bit of personal stuff for you, then certainly at the end, you know, you, if someone does that for me, I tend to give them something or, you know, some equipment. Yeah. You know, if I've got some equipment to give away, then maybe that person may have earned it. Um, certainly the guy that sort of um, was kind of shadowing me on my on my Killy Ascent, um, yeah. Yeah, I think he got a um, pretty expensive hip flask. <laughs> Wasn't that because you uh, you gave it, it to slight, him? Because he went like it was a, it was, it was, it was, it was it, it was a slight misunderstanding. Yeah, but it's fine. <laughs> like, so no, no, because I, I had it. it was but it like worked real, out well. Like, normally, I buy cheap ones, right? You know, Tesco one, whatever gets yeah, free yeah. with a bottle of Jack Daniels. But this one was really nice. I paid uh, fifty five pounds for it, and it was really nice. And it was like a pewter one, and I had a swig. And then the next day, I offered him a swig. And then he went like, and I went, yeah, yeah, have, have a swig, have a swig. And, and, yeah, mm. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, he earned it, he earned it, you know. <coughs> and um, yeah, I imagine it's quite difficult to get that type of thing in Tanzania. So yeah, as far as I'm concerned, it's found his home. Whiskey in the jar, as Tom said, brilliant. Exactly. Um, well, look, look, it's been, it's been, it's been great today. And I, I know it's, I know this one's been a little bit different. You know, talking about myths and legends and yetis and and, and all those things you know the, the mountain deities and the mountain gods and all that stuff but we always like to talk about the environment and, and enriching the environment we go in and i think i hope it's been a little bit useful today i know it's very different to what we normally do um we try to get some specific relief. questions in there yeah exactly relief. yeah, it's, yeah. Just a, it's just a bit of light relief um a bit of light relief. Before, before we go back to talking about you know the specifics of certain rubber soles over others you know <laughs> exactly exactly um you know I'm, I'm, before we go as well just one last uh, biggie as well if you um no, well, i know we, we mentioned earlier um fee if you can repost the link don't forget you know if, if you are if you if you do love evertrek and you're part of the community of evertrek and you think that we um you know we do a good job a, then yeah it'd be great to vote <laughs> yeah it was, rewards are always nice but yeah do vote for us the british travel rewards um that would be amazing um, and let's see how we get on. Um, be great to see see how we get on. I know there's some big, 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 big companies there, but you know we, we're small but mighty, aren't we? Uh, you know we're um, a growing business, um, fastly growing business, and it would be amazing for us to um, you know to do well in that. Um, yeah. But anyway, so yeah, one last plug before we go. Couldn't resist. Uh, there we are. Awesome. Put it in. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Dave. Any final thoughts, mate, on on today's uh, stranger um... trekking things? No, no, that's it. Yeah, it's been a nice, fun one, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I enjoy just uh, having a laugh as much as I do, you know, talking about, you know, carbon versus aluminium trekking poles and the adjustability of rucksacks, which uh, I'm sure we'll get back to. But no, um, yeah, check out, you know, check out the history of the places you're staying at because there's some weird stuff going on. But um, yeah, other than that, mate, um, I get to press the close button today. Hey! So I should ask you, <laughs> Andy, any last words? Any last words <laughs> before I fade you to black? Um, I'm just about to go running up that hill, Dave. Yeah, running up that building. <laughs> yeah, well, mate, yeah, if, I, if I could, I'd make a deal with God and I'd get him to swap our places. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, great stuff. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll obviously catch you all next week. Um, have an awesome week. Try and stay as cool as you can. Um, yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll catch you next time. Take it easy. Bye, bye. Bye. Your turn to press the magic button. Okay. <laughs>